Hey everybody, Michelle here. And today I have the deep blessing, priv privilege and pleasure to speak with Chris Maddox, who is founder of the Wild Woman Project and Wild Woman Fest. And Chris, you must know you are my, like you're my one-stop shop for moon anything and everything as well. <laughs> I, I have to share that uh, last night I, I listened to your full moon in Scorpio offering. And, and you might appreciate this. I was, I was soaking in a honey milk rose bath <laughs> and just, and just like going full Scorpio on this thing, you know? And, um, and, and really, and it, it was a 10 minute video um, compared to your other offerings. It was, it was like a little, it was, it was short in time, but I had to keep pausing and reflecting and, and just letting, letting your words sink in. And um, I, and, um, and before I, I start just jamming and asking you some questions, I want to share, I want to share a story about, about how we know each other and, uh, and, and one of my favorite memories of you. So, um, I, I somehow ended up at the first Wild Woman Fest back in 2000 and help me out, Chris, what year was it? <laughs> 14. 14, okay. Um, I, I had been taking a, an, an herb, herbal course with um, the, our other Wild Woman Scorpio goddess. Uh, Nicole Red. Lopez. Lopez. Anyway, so um, <laughs> her name is and, and she just randomly handed me a postcard and, and this and you know living in New York City you know you get handed things right and left you know you get bombarded with oh, but I remember holding this postcard and and putting it in my bag and 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 it just felt like like the whole bag just felt heavier in a really good way and I remember going home and taking this thing out and holding it and, and just connecting immediately and showing up to the first fest which was pure magic um I, for folks who don't know anything about Wild Woman Fest, in a nutshell, it is a gathering of women uh, on a mountain in, in New York um, for five days of, of, of wildness and, and on, unraveling into, into the heart and into a uh, community. And, and it's, it's so hard to even begin to describe it with words, um, but I will do my best to encapsulate my favorite memory. So it was the last day of the first festival and um we were in the main tent this gorgeous ginormous tent that is surrounded by trees and um and we were doing our last yoga class as we were finishing our last ohm like a split second between the last person who owned and this crack of lightning just shaking up the whole mountain and it, it, and then it started to pour rain. It was just the most cathartic. I, I still feel being in that space and, and, and feeling like the, the, the moment of, of putting our time together and then this just uh, this shaking up of, of Mama, Mama Earth uh, in, in celebration of what we had just created, it felt like. So we were all running out afterwards trying to like pack up and go home. We had to like leave right away and I remember camping out um, near the kitchen and and it was totally soaking wet and you know everybody was saying goodbye and you approached me and we, we didn't really connect that much um one-on-one -on -one, so but we didn't really know each other and you approached me and you, and you asked me if I wanted to come back and, and offer something the following year which was wild because I was standing there in the rain my heart just like had filled up you know <laughs> <laughs> couldn't have possibly imagined before and, and re re realizing like whatever this thing is, whatever th I had just gone through, this was clearly now something that I was going to be part of for as long as a wild woman fest. Was so you coming to me and, and all asking me that, I was like, Chris, whatever you need, whatever you want, like, yes. So, so thank you <laughs> for for approaching me and for, and, for, and for creating space for my voice and my gifts to be shared in this community. I, I am deeply saddened that, uh, as many of us are, that we are not going to be gathering this year. I am extremely looking forward to what we're going to create next to the next fest. Um, oh, yeah. Thank you for everything you do and everything you've created that's helped me and women who connected within the circle to just come alive and and return to our wild hell yeah it's my joy and thanks for making it with me
<laughs> you know, because it's it's woven together by all of us who are. So so offering last night your your full moon in Scorpio offering you spoke about now we are sharing this liminal space together um, uncharted territory and and really learning how to live in a period of mystery and transition and I have to say if when I look back at my whole life I feel like the whole thing has been one liminal life. It's, it, it's been constant transition, constant change, constant being in the mystery. So when the pandemic started, I, I was oddly comfortable in everything that was happening. And, um, and it's just thinking back to how many times I've hit rock bottom emotionally, financially, just all kinds of, of, of really hard moments and being able to climb out, out of that. And I'm wondering what have, what in your life have you experienced in recent years or perhaps over the course of a lifetime? What is it that has helped you now be able to be in this mystery, to dwell in this liminal space? Well, you know, it's so interesting. I've heard many people who in very in, the, in their own ways are on some kind of a path, a spiritual path or a path of growth or truth all defining it differently, of course, saying that they feel oddly like comfortable in this time, which I think is super fascinating. So I've heard you what you just said. I've heard that so many times that that's, I'm just taking note of that. I just, I think that there's something important about that. Kind of makes me think of something that was asked to me just yes. How would you begin to talk about the rewilding of the self? And I was like, how would I begin? And I, was, I always think that the beginning of that process comes down to under, like untangling the truth from the conditioning. And I think that there's a lot of conditioning in so many different ways. A lot of us being taught who we should be what our lives should look like that are coming, you know, from unhelpful, destructive, even kind of sick places. And so I think I've been on this long path of really untangling the, the bullshit, um, untangling the untruths. You know, I've looked at my own habitual ways of being, the way my mind works, the things that I chronically do. And really ask myself, like, is this rooted in some place real? Or is this something I've learned? And if so, where did I learn it from? And can I trust that place? So this is sort of long -wind, long-winded way of saying, I think, a lot of what's happening in the liminal time of this pandemic. And, you know, just to clarify, that's a between worlds. Like what we're going, what we're going to see, what's coming next, what we're making what the next world will be, we don't have yet. The old world is gone and we're here. And I think um, this is an, uh, it can be an awakening to truth. An eye opening, like one thing I've been thinking about a lot is how this is putting pressure on all of our structures from our personal structures and our homes and our household and our relationships to the societal structures. And we're learning how we fare, how these structures actually fare under pressure. And a lot of what I hope to see in the new world and I hope to be a part of creating together in the new world is new structures that are more harmonious with nature, new structures that are more harmonious with truth and beauty and the heart. So, you know, living in the liminal space, I think if, if you're alive right now, like if you're on the planet and you're watching this, you're in this conversation, our whole existence is a liminal space. Um, but I think I inhabit that by being in a constant process of, of separating what's true from what's not true. And that's can be a very disorienting experience and also exhilarating, you know? Mm. I remember back to 
the time, um, fast forwarding a few years after we had met at Fest, I was living in, uh, I had moved up to Western Mass at that point. I had Luca. I remember um, reaching out to you and, and telling you, like, Chris, I am in one of the darkest periods of my life right now. I have, it feels like I have little to no resources, but I really want to be part of one of the things you're, you, you've created, which is um, facilitating and training women to lead circles. And, and you invited me right in. And I remember one of the first you shared with us uh, was what, yeah, we went deep into what the word wild means. And one of the things that stuck with me was the word untamed. And with regards to what you just said, of, of peeling back the layers, of, of remembering what it is that we're truly made of, it's mm -hmm also been a real it's it's been a guiding compass for me to to take a closer look at as you say these structures that are some may be crumbling under pressure some may be just barely holding on um, and figuring out how to how to how to how to untame what we've created not only in a personal way now but as a, as a whole and also I love what you said last night about being 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 in this moment in time and, and not taking all the responsibility for what needs to happen and neither taking none of the responsibility for what needs to happen, but taking some responsibility, each of us taking some responsibility for the kind of world that we want to create right now. And now that we are, you know, now that everything I mean, already before pandemic, we were all in this community doing some pretty amazing um, unraveling work within ourselves. So now it's, it, I'm sure this, this whole thing has taken the Wild Woman Project to a new level. And I'm just curious what that's, what that's starting to look like with all your offerings. Yeah, that's super interesting. And I feel there's a lot, um, but I know some things, like there are some clues. Um, so the circle space is all around deep listening in, to inner guidance, to the wisdom of nature, and to the wisdom from around the circle. So that's both in the circle there and the big human family, like the human intelligence. And those three spheres are like the main spheres of guidance that we're, we're touching upon when we're in that space together. And so the thing I think is um, very hopeful about the time that we're in is that we have um, the voices of women in the conversation. A like hundred years ago, we wouldn't have had the voices and the perspectives of women. So it's an incredible asset and a resource that is kind of like unprecedented in the same way that the pandemic is unprecedented. Like this is the time for women to be sitting together and to be in the deepest listening of their whole life. Because I do believe the message is coming through and it is coming through the natural world and we are part of the natural world. So the more we're in listening, we're taking note of what we're hearing and then when you do that, it changes your action. And each of us has a different mission. Each of us has a different little bit of responsibility in the big co-creation of whatever is coming. But I think that the, I would just say, of the work, in my mind, the volume has been turned way up. Like that's what I wanna be doing on most days is to be tuning in to the inner wisdom, and the wisdom coming through my sisters, coming through the human family, coming from nature, and then seeing what happens. What do we do with that information? And I think it's little by little, tiny creative act by tiny creative act. You know, and in creation, there's a simultaneous destruction. That's the teaching of nature over and over and over again. So I would just say the volume got turned up, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and I think um, a lot of like how we're living, I just think it's going to radical. I think it's radicalizing us in a very good way, in a very important way. The urgency is up. Mm -hmm. Which brings me to my next question. Yeah. Uh, you brought up yesterday and in in, in, in realizing that, you know, you've created this life 
for yourself that you love you know the thing your your work you, the things you show up for the the things you choose to show up for daily you know, it's it's your creation and yet this pandemic has shown you that uh, as much as you, you you're choosing to show up for what you want to show up for it's in some way shaken up this belief that you really are not in control of <laughs> any of it <laughs> like like and, and it's and it's funny because you know we that that we I really I operate to say that this is my life and I'm gonna you know do the things and thank goodness that 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 got shaken up thank goodness for that I love being comfortable in the mystery and one cannot really truly dwell in the mystery without relinquishing control so I'm wondering what daily practices have helped you relinquish this control and learn to lean more into trust? Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. Um, so yeah, the, the illusion of control is something really powerful and it's kind of like a spell that's being broken right now. And I think what helps me to be okay in that um, is a real centering in the heart. I actually, when I say that, I mean like I drop the energy from my head, from my mind. I think of like inhaling into the mind and exhaling down, kind of anchoring in the heart so that I have the intelligence of the perception of mind but it's like, it's being held in the wisdom of the heart. And, it, and when I'm in that space, which is a big love space, and it's not, it's, it's like, I've been thinking about this word love and how it's so strong. I'm like, I, I just like, I want it, I, I was like, it should be a mountain, you know, instead of like a balloon heart, you know, <laughs> it's love, like real deep love and that's a love for life and I really like I if I can anchor in to how much love like how much I love the trees and how much I love other people and how beautiful and mysterious and excruciating and brilliant and fun and you know if life is not boring it's like, if you're paying attention, it's a fucking epic adventure. And I love, like, I love that. So if I can get into that zone, I can be in my heart, I can be in my love of life, then that, that's like, then I'm there, I'm on that path of the adventurer, you know, and I have whatever tools I have, you know, like whoever, whoever I've been, whatever I've picked up along the way, so that I can navigate forward and just do my best. And I think one thing that I'm really, I've been working on for such a long time, but I, I feel it really strong in this easy with myself. Like there's a way in which we can be so hard with ourselves. You know, we can be so expecting and judgmental. And even if it's just really subtle, but just being like, you're doing a great job. This is crazy. What you're living through is bananas. You're doing great you know, pour yourself a cup of coffee and just keep going, you know, or whatever it is, <laughs> whatever is your permit. I love coffee. Um, I joke, we've joked around at Wild Woman Fest that coffee has all the, all the four elements in it. <laughs> so it's a magic elixir. <laughs> um, so I would say that anchoring the heart, anchoring in love of life, viewing it as an adventure and just like being nice to yourself along the way. Ooh, thank you for that. Of course. Uh, you, spoke, you speak to the force of love. And I wanted to share um, that you are going to be facilitating um, a whole offering on this. Um, it's, I, I believe it's called Exploring the Skill of Loving. Is that right? It, it's just the skill of loving. It's our next Wild Woman School session. Would you, would you tell us a little bit more about what that is and what, what, what more or less to expect? Yeah, well, you know, we've hung out a lot and we've been in different, um, sp you know, spaces, Wild Woman Project spaces together. So, you know, the emphasis on the heart 
like we begin and end every circle with a heart, 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 because to me, when we're in the heart, that's an altered, uh, altered state of consciousness. To me, the power of love is like an extraordinary, maybe the most extraordinary um, alchemizer. Easy with myself. Like, there's a way in which we can be so hard with ourselves, you know, we can be so expecting and judgmental. And even if it's just really subtle, but just being like, you're doing a great job. This is crazy. What you're living through is bananas. You're doing great you know, pour yourself a cup of coffee and just keep going, you know, or whatever it is, <laughs> whatever is your permit. I love coffee. Um, I joke, we've joked around at Wild Woman Fest that coffee has all the, all the four elements in it. <laughs> so it's a magic elixir. <laughs> um, so I would say that anchoring the heart, anchoring in love of life, viewing it as an adventure and just like being nice to yourself along the way. Thank you for that. Of course. At you sport, you speak to the force of love. And I wanted to share um, that you are going to be facilitating um, a whole offering on this. Um, it's, I, I believe it's called Exploring the Skill of Loving. Is that right? It, it's just the skill of loving. It's our next Wild Woman School session. Would you, would you tell us a little bit more about what that is and what, what, what more or less to expect? Yeah, well, you know, we've hung out a lot and we've been in different, um, sp you know, spaces, Wild Woman Project spaces together. So, you know, the emphasis on the heart, like we begin and end every circle with a heart, 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 because to me, when we're in the heart, that's an altered, uh, altered state of consciousness. To me, the power of love is like an extraordinary, maybe the most extraordinary um, alchemized transformer. Um, and as, you know, we live these days, one of the things I'm becoming very aware of is in our online communication, which is now like our only communication for the time being, for the most part, there's a lot of interesting, disheartening division going on. And, you know, there's a lot of levels to that. And I think we should all think very critically about manufactured division and be careful not to fall into that trap. Um, but I've been thinking about how much we need each other to make the new world more beautiful. We need each other. And to the best of our abilities, we need bridges in the space between us. And love comes with respect. Love comes with patience. Love comes with an ability to listen even a little bit more than we speak. And so, you know, in Wild Woman School session next week, we're gonna talk about love in the framework of a skill. Like I was saying, like, you know, on that venture of life, we have our, like our satchel or whatever, you know, and we have whatever we've, we've um, collected along the way in the way of tools that has been helpful. So I want to really want to think about love as something that is a skill that we can cultivate because it is something that is both voluntary and involuntary. There's a level to love where it just comes naturally to us, you know, Luca, like, you know, whatever, whatever is our particular, it doesn't challenging to love there. It's natural. And then there's the skill of loving. And that's like the great big ancient task of loving everybody, everybody, no matter what. That's, I think, if we're going to take this thing in a beautiful direction, that has to sit at the very foundation. So that's what we're talking. You know, Wild Woman School is not really like me, like uh, teaching so much. It's, it's a lot of ritual. It's a lot of journaling and inquiry. So it's very much your, you know, a guided experience with your own inner guidance. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's probably 
we most need a thing right now. So I look forward to, to sharing that space with you next week. Uh, for folks watching, it's going to be on May 18th. Um, okay. we'll, we'll throw all the links along the side, alongside this video. Chris, I, I've been navigating around different women's spaces in the last decade, and my, my little puzzle piece self feels like finally fits in this particular community. And, and that brings, <laughs> <laughs> it just, it, it lights me up and, and my, my inner little girls lit up. My, my adult woman self is like, yeah. And, and I wanted to continue to show up for the, the things that you're creating within, with, with co-creating within this community. Um, it's, it's truly wild aiming. And before, you know, before, before we wrap it up, I'll just end it with this. So we, we started the festival with, 50 ish women right and then the next year it sold out like immediately and then the next the year after that you'll have to do two fests back to back which one day you're gonna have to tell me about how crazy that was <laughs> it was so crazy <laughs> so crazy <laughs> you know, and, and i would have been to both of them except luca was nursing at the time and i could it just, i would have been to both of them like making definitely that would have happened and <laughs> your, your your work in this world and the authenticity behind it clearly is is a clear indicator of why so many of us are just flocking to this these, these things. So thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. I love being with you. Thank you so much. And thank you for being part of the Wild Woman Project. And also, for, I'm so excited for everything that you're creating with your studio and your students. It's beautiful to watch that grow and flourish. Yeah. Um, so blessings on your whole community. Thank you. Yeah. I will say, I will say, I'm taking this concept of the wild and the rewilding and the untaming into this, into my nook within this community. I don't know to what degree you know anything about hot yoga. It's we've we've been going through some shit on our end with our with. I, I do know. You know, so so what um a crew of other amazing people are now doing is we're we're turning the chapter and and rewriting the story because there's so many amazing people within this community. The yoga itself is 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 transformative. So um, I love. I love taking you know, the wildness that I cultivated with you and the other woman now into this space that so desperately needs it. Totally. That's the whole idea. If we can just have a little more truth, a little more untamed energy here and here and here and here, right? Like Dr. Estes says, to reach out and mend the part of the world that is within your reach. Exactly. Exactly. Way to go, mama. Yeah.